I'm going to start tonight, start teaching the book of Colossians. Amen. And teach the entire book for about the next month, five, six weeks. Okay, amen. Now, uh, Colossians uh, is in what's in the biblical times called Asia Minor. We looked at that on Wednesday night. I've had you had maps up here, praise the Lord. It's about 15 miles from Lady Osea, okay, south, southeast of Lady Osea. And today, what we would call southern Turkey. Okay, amen. It's where uh, this was. Uh, the Apostle Paul, of course, uh, founded there also a church there in Colossians. And so let's begin reading here the book of Colossians, praise God. With Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus or Timothy, our brethren. I want you to notice, first of all, what Paul says. I am an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And so there are some people here today who say, you know, there's no such thing as an apostle today. But I would tell you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. I would tell you to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. It said, God said in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So if the church is here, everything he said in the church is still here. Praise God. An apostle is a, a sent one, a special sent one. Praise God. An apostle, Paul talks about it in, in Corinthians, amen, uh, someone who is a planter, plant churches, plants works, plants Bible schools, all those sorts of things that are an apostle. Uh, the, the Apostle Paul typically stayed in a particular place about one to two years in a particular place to plant a church and then the Lord would move him on to another one to do. Amen. He taught for two years in a Bible school we read here in Asia Minor and other places. But the, the key thing I want you to notice, he's an apostle by the will of God. He did not choose to become apostle and he really didn't choose to be an apostle sent to a group of people he wasn't interested in. If you read in Romans chapter 10, verse 1, Paul says, my heart's desire, pray to God, is Israel be saved. Well, I mean, he was raised as a Jew of Jew, praise God. I mean, he said the feet of Gamaliel, you know, and the tribe of Benjamin. He was raised to be a, a priest of God. Amen. In the Old Testament sense, in fact, he was raised to be someone eventually on the Sanhedrin Council and perhaps even the chief priest one day. And so, but God on that road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, when God called him, God called him right when he got saved. And he, you can read more about it. I'm not going to get into it. But you read in Acts 26, you'll read where the Lord then lays out for him what his job was. He said, I have sent you to be an apostle to the Gentiles, which had to be a shock to Paul. <laughs> Amen. Those were the last people he wanted to be with. And when I get later on in the book and, 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 and take, a, take a look at who some of these people were and the kind of things Paul had to say, you would understand. But God calls and sends people where he wants, not where you want. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 over there, it says, praise God, God said in the church according to his will. So he sets people in ministerial offices and other offices, and he gives them assignment. And I say all the time, one of the greatest failures of the body of Christ is understanding and obeying assignment. What am I assigned to do? And let me go do it, but praise God. We're not going to get into that tonight. Let's continue. To the saints. So we know then that since this is to the saints, we know he's writing to Christians. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace, Charis, amen, amen. Be unto you and Irene, peace, quietness, rest. Charis means, of course, that word grace has really almost 18 different English iterations to it. And so grace is power. Grace can be manifestation. Grace can be a gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Grace has a name. His name is Holy Spirit. Amen. Hebrews 10, 29, glory to God. That's his name. There are New Testament names of God, just like there are Old Testament names. 
And most people know the Old Testament. They know Jehovah Rapha, Shama, Tiskanu, all that. But there are New Testament God names too. One of them, the Holy Ghost, has a name. He's called Spirit of Grace. So he says here, grace and quietness and rest from, note where it comes from, God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And people are trying to find rest and quietness in money and drink and drugs and, and uh, all kind of drugs and legal drugs, illegal drugs, all kind of him and her. But real peace comes from being in fellowship with God. We give thanks to God and the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. There are a couple of things I want you to note. Somebody asked me just the other day. Uh, amen. Note there is to God and the Father. There's the Father. And then there's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I want you to note this. You know, like uh, someone, someone was... Uh, asked me right up here the other day a week or so, a couple weeks ago and somebody asked me about this picture something and somebody was telling them about this matter erroneously uh, amen and say well then who was Jesus praying to praying to himself father forgive me forgive them they don't know what they're doing right father he's praying that God of Gethsemane I don't want to do this not my will but yours but he sure wasn't talking to himself Okay, amen. I ain't got to say a whole lot about that. I mean, it's pretty obvious, and it's kind of difficult for me to see how people can't see that. But anyway, <laughs> glory to God. But notice that we're always praying for you. Now, in Ephesians chapter 6, recently I taught in Ephesians chapter 6, and over there he talked about to make sure that we supplicate it always with perseverance, persistency for all saints. And so God expects you to pray for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ every day in general. Then I pray for specific parts of the church, including this specific part, each one of you. Hallelujah. Praise God. But prayer is necessary because God moves on the earth because someone who has authority in the earth, that's us. Ask him to do it. He's not a bull in the china shop just come in and going to slap and do whatever I want. He gave us authority in the earth, which means, praise God, we invite him to come in. We don't pray, nothing happens. So we must pray, amen? Note he said, praise God. I'm praying for you, saints. Since we heard of your faith, the Greek word for faith is pistis. It's the name of my Bible school. See, it means for your trust and your confidence, your assurance, your belief. We heard about your faith, man. And people were talking about, they heard about your faith. Would they say that about you? We heard about your faith in the anointed one, Christos, the word Christ. Amen. Christ is not Jesus' first or last name. It describes what he is. Amen. That word Christos means he's the one that is the anointed one. Anointed with what? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's anointed with the Holy Ghost and of the love. Now, I bracketed in my Bible faith and love together. Why? Because these two are always together. We heard about your faith, and we heard about the agape, it's the Greek word for love. That's the God kind of love that sees everybody as valuable and precious, regardless of where they come or who they are. Hallelujah. Doesn't put yourself first, puts others first. Does it get angry quickly? Come on, somebody. Has a lot of long suffering with it. He said, we heard about your faith and your love, which you have to all the saints. So he's talking about the church at Colossae is not only a faith church, it's a love church. And if, it's, if it is a faith church, it can only be a love church. Because Galatians 5, 6 says, faith emerges. The Greek word worketh. It is made active and efficient by love. What makes faith work is love. So the first person, amen, you're using your faith for to help is not yourself. If you're just believing, all, believing God for all the stuff for you, you got it backwards. It's not wrong to believe for something for you after you believe God for everybody else. 
So I don't start out my prayer to God daily. I don't start out with my prayer to God talking about whatever it is I need to believe God for. I start out believing God for the world, for the lost, for the church. Hallelujah. For those in authority. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he said, we've heard about that. For the expectation of hope, which is laid up for you in heaven, and boy, you do have one. Wherefore you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, in other words, I've taught this to you, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, that's the all the known world at that time, and bring it forth fruit. The word, when the word is put forth, it will always produce. You know, uh, every so often we get people saying, well, they ask the question, they don't go here and ask somebody, well, do they have deliverance service over there? Amen. Well, I know what they mean. What they mean by, you know, somebody up at the altar and somebody casting out devils and making a show about it. Every time we have service, we have deliverance service. Because the word is preached. And when the word is preached, it produces fruit. It will set people's minds free, set their bodies free. Amen. If you could see in the realm of the spirit, you'd see demons, demons leaving when the word is preached. Every service is a delivering service. And every time you see somebody come up and get saved, that's a real delivering service. Amen. They've been moved from darkness into light. You better believe if the word of God is there, deliverance is there. Romans 1.16 says, the word of God is the dunamis. It is the power of God to all deliverance. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. In other words, wherever the word is preached, there is deliverance. And if you need deliverance right now, praise God, put, put some faith in what you're about to hear. And you're going to be freed from the supernatural power of the word because the word itself is supernatural. That's why God wants it in your mouth. Because it's supernatural. It's the sword which the spirit uses. Let's keep on reading here. Praise God. It bringeth forth much fruit as it doth also in you. Since the day you heard it, it's been producing in you. Amen. And the day that you knew about the grace of God and the truth or word of God. As ye also learn of Epaphras. Now when it talks about Epaphras, Epaphras is a minister of a God who assists Paul. Paul had a lot of assistance. There's no way that the office of the apostle can be done without someone else. See, the, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in Ephesians chapter 3, I believe it is, the apostle Paul says, not only am I a wise master builder, amen, I built it, but Apollos watered. Amen. That Greek word there, water, means he saturated. Amen. He, I laid the foundation of the church and then Apollos came and just watered that foundation yeah. till the church became strong yeah. Yeah. Uh, amen an apostle is a Paul called himself a wise master builder that word there praise because also you'll see in, over there in Ephesians is an architect on he is a architect our architect can see you know, if, if this was all dirt, an architect can see some black dirt when nobody sees nothing but black dirt, but an architect can, can see the building, can see the structures, can see everything, the cut against, he can see it all in his mind. But he got to have a plumber. He got to have a carpet layer. He got to have a cement person. He got to have a brick layer, okay, or else nothing gets done. And so in the office of the apostle, there's always a team that is involved. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So he goes on to say here, praise God. So this man here, Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you, Church of Colossae, a faithful minister of Christ. So Paul planted a church in Colossae and then raised up ministers in Colossae. Hallelujah. Who then came on to help Paul in Colossae and we'll if I had time to talk about Epaphras, you'll find, you'll find him in several other places. Praise God, where he was a, a helper of Paul. Well, so raising them up today, we would call it a Bible school. We'd call it pistols. See, that's part of an apostolic ministry. Who also declared unto us, Epaphras told me about your love in the spirit. 
Now, what is agape in the pneuma? It's a Greek word, love in the spirit. Well, several things. Loving in the spirit is when you get out of, uh, not only do you pray for me with your mind and your understanding, you get over into 1 Corinthians 14, 2 for me. What's that? I got you to turn to 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Okay, amen. He that speak of an unknown tongue, speak of what? Mysteries. Okay. Secrets. By the Holy Ghost. No man understandeth him. It said, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. And so, praise the Lord, you've been praying for me. Yeah, I've been praying for you, but you've been praying for me, and you've been doing it in the realm of the spirit because when you pray in, the, when you pray in tongues or pray in the spirit, you're praying the most accurate prayer you can pray. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost, amen. Romans 8, 26, 27, and 28, where it talks about all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his choice or purpose. People pick that out, but see, you don't start with 28. You don't even start with 27. You start with 26. See, and 26 talks about praying in tongues, amen, which produces the benefits and the good things that happen. For those who are called according to God's intention. Romans 8 28 is not even for everybody. It's not even for every Christian. It's for those who have accepted the call to God's intention and have been praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, you have been praying, praise God for me in the Holy Ghost. You've been showing me love in the spirit. You put my knees ahead of yours and you've been praying it to praise God that God move in my behalf. So you got a love fest going. Paul said, I'm praying for you. I found out you're praying for me. Amen. Glory to God. Let's keep going. And for this cause, because, for what cause? Well, because of the prayer and because of the word. We also, since we, since the day we heard, heard what? We heard about your faith. We heard about your love. We heard about your prayer. Amen. And we heard, amen, and you've been getting much word. So since the day we heard that, we do not cease to pray for you. Do we see a theme here already? Praying for other people. Okay, amen. Pray for you and to desire that you might be filled. Now, the word, the Greek word for filled is pleru, and it means that your net be crammed full. Got no more room. You be filled to the top. I'm praying for you that you might be filled to the top with the knowledge. Now, the word knowledge is epic gnosis in Greek. The Greek, of course, New, the New Testament written from the Greek, both you, you have a Greek Old Testament even, and New Testament, praise God. But Greek was the business language of the day. Greek and Latin in, time, in Paul's time were what civilized people spoke. Hallelujah, amen. That's another story another day. But, but if you didn't speak Greek, you were a barbarian. They called you, good. Amen. And so this, this word here, uh, amen, epignosis means full discernment. Amen. Be able to discern something is to be able to see and get what his real intention is. I'm praying, hallelujah, amen, that you might be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Now, the will of God is the choice of God. God's choice in all Sophia. Sophia is the word wisdom. Wisdom has a couple of definitions. One, wisdom of God is the ability to take knowledge and successfully use it. Now, a lot of people can have a lot of knowledge, but don't have no wisdom. You ever met people like that? They got a lot of book learning, okay, and, and don't have a lick of sense. <laughs> I've met people <laughs> like that. I mean, I mean I, I've had the... Uh, Man, sir, the people have all kind of, you name it, degrees, they got all the letters, man. They got boom, boom, ain't got us. Legacy. Don't know how to do nothing except just that one learned thing. 
Jessica. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge successfully. Wisdom of God, second thing, is a deeper level of that. Wisdom of God is God knowing what the truth is and how you can win with it. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm praying for you that you, you be crammed full with the discernment of his choice with every kind of wisdom and spiritual understanding. The word is understands the word intelligence. Spiritual intelligence, praise God, because there's natural intelligence. The world's intelligence says if you want money, hoard it, steal it, whatever else. God's way said, he said, give and it shall be given unto you. In other words, there is God's way of doing things called the kingdom of God. And then there's the world's way on everything. On every single question, there is a worldly way to do it. And there is a spiritual understanding way to do it. Amen? If you want God's best result, then you do the spiritual understanding. You get the wisdom of God working in this matter. In fact, the Bible says if you got yourself in trouble, James 1, 5, it, <clears throat> excuse me, over there it talks about tests and trials, James 1, 1, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad greeting, verse 2, uh, amen. He said, uh, those of you who got faith, have faith and patience, yeah, amen. He just gets down to verse 5, and if any of you lack Sophia, any of you lack Sophia, let him ask to God. James 1, 5, let him ask to God. Who giveth to all, talking about the church, men liberally, and doesn't turn them away and it shall be given to him. Now, I pray that prayer quite often. Amen. Especially, if, you know, because my job is to run this ministry. Okay, man. And this ministry is a whole lot more than just this location. It's in a lot of places, all right? So, amen. I, run, I recently ran up into some stuff. And I just went to God about it. I said, all right, now I need some wisdom. I need manifestation of the wisdom of God from here to here. Because wisdom of God's already inside here. It's called the Holy Ghost. I need it manifest to my mind. Glory to God. Amen. So that I would know what to do. And it's interesting to me. Praise the Lord. Now, I will also give you a, a tidbit here. The person who prays in tongues a lot is someone that off, very often has the wisdom of God manifest to produce a result that works. I learned this from experience over the years. Praying in tongues a lot is amazing how things get busted up the enemy's trying to do. They just get busted up by some kind of way you just <laughs> amen. See, because you're praying those divine secrets. Hallelujah. Now God said, now if you ask me for wisdom, you need insight into what's really going on and you really need to know what to do in order to get to where you need to get. Amen. Because sometimes in life there are things in front of you you just can't figure out what to do. Some things are so complex. Amen. And you don't have all the information anyway. You don't know people's real hearts. You don't know people's real intentions. There's a lot of stuff you don't know, but God knows all that. The Holy Ghost knows all that. And the Holy Ghost knows the future. Now James, James 1.30 said, Jesus is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So when you receive Jesus, you receive access to the wisdom of God. Stop saying, I don't know what to do. Saying, saying to know what to do is in here. Now, Father, I'm laying, laying hold of that James 1, 5, if you're in a tough spot in particular. I'm laying hold of this James 1, 5, and I receive that wisdom. Because if you read James 1, 5, read 6, 7, and 8. He said, when you, when you ask him for wisdom, let him ask in faith without wavering. So, man, you can't ask, ask God for Monday for wisdom of God. Then Tuesday, Lord, I, I need the wisdom of God. And Wednesday, Lord, I need the wisdom of God. He said, no, you got faith rules applying here. Faith rules mean that God heard you. He's not deaf. He heard you the first time. Hallelujah. He said he give it to you. So my confession on any particular topic I'm dealing with, once I deal with that, and I say, Lord, I want to thank you. I got the wisdom for this. I got the wisdom for this building need. I got the wisdom for these personnel issues. I got the wisdom for whatever it is I got to deal with. I want to thank you for it. I want to give you praise and glory. And that blesses God when you thank him because you've already got it because he can't lie. 
See, when you come and ask him again and again and again, you're saying to him, I don't believe you. I need some evidence. We walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah, amen. So then I'm so notice what, what he's saying. Praise God. Thank God for the, somebody thank God for the wisdom of God. We are not stuck with NBC News and whoever else. Wall Street Journal. We ain't stuck with them. We're not stuck with some professor don't even know God. I mean, we got God himself sharing secrets with us. Ooh, that's good stuff. Glory to God. Why? What happens if you have spiritual intelligence? The next word is that. See, so that is connected to the wisdom of God that was produced with prayer, Amen. with faith and love flowing and operating, putting other people first. Amen. He said, now I'm praying this for you, that you walk worthy. The word worthy means appropriate. Then. That you walk appropriately of the Lord. The word Lord is kurios. Kurios means in Greek the supreme authority. So walking in the Lord means I don't decide my own course. Amen. I want to walk appropriately. What is he saying? Okay, amen. Order my steps. My steps are ordered of God. I wind up in my case, I wind up in the right country at the right time. I wind up in the right city at the right time. Glory to God. Don't waste no time. Don't waste no money. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Ain't got time to waste. I don't have time to waste. Amen. Showing up, don't, I don't believe in wasting God's money. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. That you might walk appropriately unto the supreme authority, unto all pleasing where he's pleased, being productive in every good ergon, in every good deed, every good work, and at the same time, increasing getting more of the epignosis of God. Amen. What did he say? He said, now the more you do, you're in the right place at the right time and you learn how to follow this, the better you get at it. Amen. Yeah, and that's why experience doesn't matter. Uh, when people say experience don't matter, they don't know what they're talking about. I don't care what realm you're talking about, natural realm or spiritual realm. Experience does matter. Success breeds success. Really does. Hallelujah. When you learn, I, I was doing it, I was telling you today, this is things I've learned, right? I, I, I know about from praying, praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost, what the result of that is. I know the scripture says about it, but I know it experientially too. Amen. Amen. After decades and decades of doing it. Hallelujah. Well, success brings success. You learn after a while, you know, if I do this, this, this is what's going to happen here. And if I do that, if I step out of here, uh, ain't no telling. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. Praise God. You will increase, he said, in the discernment of the Lord. There are things that I didn't see when I was younger in God that today I can see them right off. Right? Same thing with you, right? Back in the day, there was something the enemy was able to slap you upside the head. You didn't see him see it coming. Now, you can see him afar off. Oh, you, I seen that trick. You tried that trick 25 years ago. I knew that trick. I ain't going for that trick. Amen. See, so success builds success. The more, the more you spend time doing these things, walking in love, getting the word, praying for others, hallelujah, Amen. Note the order. The world is always the opposite. The world is always about selfishness. Love is the very opposite of selfishness. Selfishness is about me first. Love is about you first. Glory to God. Give me three hallelujah, somebody. Strengthen. Now, when you get that knowledge of God and all these things, you see, there is not, praise God, a period at the end of knowledge of God. So all these things are connected together. People like to take out a verse without the connection to the rest and make it say something that it didn't say. Strengthen, the word strengthen here is, dun uh, is dunamu, and that word means enabled. You have been now enabled with all dunamis, the word might. Dunamis is supernatural 
power. It is miracle working ability. Dunamis means there's greater power than all the armies of the world combined. When you talk about dunamis, glory to God. So he said, you are enabled when you walk worthy of the Lord. You're fruitful in every good work. You're operating in spiritual intelligence. You're operating in faith and the love of God. You will be even more enabled with more supernatural power according to, uh, might rather, dunamis, according to his glory, kratos. This time the word power here is kratos. And the word kratos is the word strength. See, so according to his glorious strength. So now you get God's strength. Glory to God. And you can read what the strength of God is in Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Amen. Kratos is what he used to raise Jesus from the dead. Against all opposition of the devil. Everything that Satan brought to bear trying to keep Jesus being raised from the dead failed because of the strength of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible told us that with God, in order for God to do it, all he did was just move his arm. <laughs> Satan hanging on there thinking, I got you, I got you. God said, please. <laughs> Glory to God. So you strengthen with Almighty according to his glorious strength unto all patience. Now, patience is a cuss word to believers. Ain't want nothing to do about no patience. The word patience means cheerful endurance. Not just endurance. It means cheerful endurance. In other words, I can keep the smile even through the trial. Say that again. I can keep the smile even through the trial. Amen. The only way you do that is that you got some inside intelligence. Amen. I know the outcome this thing's be. I know how this thing's gonna eventually be fixed, so I'm gonna keep on smiling through it. Now, if you ain't sure about that, you're, oh, God, oh. but if you're sure about it, praise God, you can smile. You can have joy in the middle of it. Amen. Right, James 1, 5, count it all joy. When you fall in the divers' temptations, chests, and trials. James said that. Praise God. Same thing Paul did. Let's keep on reading. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, all patience and long. Uh oh. Long suffering. Lord, now wait a minute. <laughs> long suffering means fortitude. See, long suffering means mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huh? fortitude. I ain't gonna be moved here. Okay, I'm gonna keep on feeding on that epinosis. I'm gonna keep on operating that faith. I'm gonna keep feeding on that word. I'm gonna keep on walking in love. I'm going to keep my eyes. I know Paul praying for me. I know the believers are praying for me, and I'm praying for them. And there is a synergistic thing that's going on. I mean, it's going on. Praise God. I'm, I'm blessing them. They're blessing me. I'm blessing them. This blessing me. Praise God. The Holy Ghost is working for them. It's working for me. I mean, God's doing the secrets for them, and God's doing the secrets for me. See, the body feeds off itself in the love of God, which is one of the reasons why God wants to fellowship one another. Hallelujah. You cannot be an island out here. You got to be connected. Well, he goes on to say, praise God, and do it with joyfulness. You know what the word joy, the Greek word was kara for joy, joyfulness? And the word joyfulness means calm delight. Calm. Keep your cool. Amen. What do you mean calm delight with that? It means that, amen, I'm not losing it and I'm enjoying the fight. Because I know I win, so I can enjoy the fight. Come. Look at your neighbor and say, stay cool. See, it's calm to like, now some of you in here and some of you watching me, praise the Lord. You're going through some fiery, the scriptures use the term, fiery trials. And what he said to do with fiery trials is stay cool. 
Don't lose it. I don't care what you're doing. Stay cool. I don't care what subject you're talking about. If you lose it, now I use the example, praise God, of, you know, because I took flight lessons, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I always talk about airplanes, but I don't care what you're talking about. Hey, man, if you get a pilot up there, I'm going to tell you, man, if you get a pilot up there and he's at 25,000 feet and he flames out the engine, you know, and the thing starts shaking and all that, the last thing Richard better, better not happen is that the pilot loses it. If the pilot starts, oh, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. Guess what? You are going to die. <laughs> no doubt about it. The pilot loses it, baby. Did you see what was in the news today? In the news today, there was a, I don't, it looked like a T-172. I'm not sure exactly what it exactly was. But it was one of them, it was a fixed wing aircraft. I saw the news today. The pilot had a, an event. It was a, a single pilot aircraft. And the pilot had an event, and they lost the pilot. They had on there a civilian who had never flown a plane, knew nothing about it. You know how people say, well, I'm afraid he's going to play because he might have a heart attack and then we're going to die. If you say that, you are going to. But what happened? It was in the news today. You know what happened? Praise God. That person didn't lose it. He got on the radio. He called the tower. Now, let me tell you. Learning to, is one thing to fly an airplane, it's another thing to land it. 90% of all crashes are either takeoffs or landing. Amen. Usually, and it's usually pilot error too. Okay? So he's on the phone and they're directing him how to steer the airplane. Now, look, if you ain't cool as a cucumber, you can't do this. I'm, trust me, you cannot do this. Okay, and it was one thing he, he got down, they got him over the airport, but now he got to land the sucker. The first time that uh, they tried to fly a helo, I was in a, a helicopter and trying to put the skids on the ground. I couldn't find the ground. I kept trying to find the ground because you can't, you're sitting up there. I couldn't find the ground. <laughs> Finally, I said, I can't land this thing. <laughs> you take this. <laughs> Okay. I mean, you gonna you gonna he gonna do what? That dude landed that plane. They even got a no video. I saw it this morning. You see it this morning? He landed that plane, brought it to a stop, and never knew a thing. <laughs> One reason why. Come. So take a deep breath. Blow it out. Money trouble, physical trouble, blah blah blah. Enjoy the fight. Satan, Satan's already lost. He ain't going to lose. He's already lost. Amen. We're going to have fun with Colossians. Amen. Anyway, let's keep on going. Praise God. Giving thanks. Now, the term giving thanks means be very grateful. Don't take stuff for granted. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet. Now, the word meet means God the Father made us qualified. So we were not qualified before whatever this action he's going to do. He made us qualified. Uh, amen. So we give him thanks because he qualified us. He made us qualified to be a sharer or partaker of the inheritance of the saints in Fus. The Greek word for light is fire. Now, if you're going to talk about the inheritance in fire, uh, amen. So I guess we better go back and see, well, where can we find some stuff about inheritance? I'll start with Ephesians, and I'll turn over to Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Here's one place we can start looking at it. And again, Paul's talking about, I'm praying for y'all. And See, I pray, I pray these prayers for you. And he says in verse, why, and why y'all know this, because I've taught it to you so much. Verse 16, I cease not to pray for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What, what are you praying, Paul? Please pray this for me too. That in God and Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of Sophia, wisdom. Revelation here means disclosure. Praise God. In the recognition or knowledge of him, the eyes of your mind here being brightened up so that you may know what is the expectation of his invitation? What the Plutus riches of the glory of his inheritance, and see this word in. 
So whatever the inheritance is, even in the fire, the inheritance is inside the saints. Do I have any saints of God? So the inheritance, praise God, an inheritance means somebody died and left you their wealth. Right? Now, I trust that Pastor Deborah and my kids and grandkids ain't waiting on me to die to get the inheritance. I told Deborah one time, I said, I said, because uh, the insurance I had on, have on me, you know. I said, Ma, I'm, girl, I think I'm, I'm worth more than you dead, dead and alive. She smacked me, boy. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> no, you more alive. Dude. Okay. But an, an inheritance is when someone has built up something and then left it for you. Now, this inheritance, so somebody, has, somebody has to die in order for somebody else to get the inheritance. This inheritance is in the saints. It is such an inheritance. Praise God. In fact, let me get ahead of myself. The inheritance in the saints. Expertise calling rich to the glory of his inheritance. And what is the hoopabello? Exceeding. Exceeding means way past what is normal and natural. The exceeding magnitude of his supernatural ability or dunamis to the believer according to or in the style of kata the working of his mighty power that's the word inertia and according to the efficiency and operation of his kratos here his strength so our inheritance becomes more efficient with us to operate in the strength of God when our eyes have been opened and we see how it works getting back to the wisdom of God see this prayer to me the man praying over there at Colossus see see this is big prayer see I pray this for you when I pray this for you there are things you take for granted now you're just like I know I know all this I know how see you know you didn't know squat dilly about that a short time ago and how many people you know don't know none of it? Amen. Guess what happened? Eyes of your understanding were open. You have the ability now to really walk on Satan. Now, whether or not you use it is another thing. Because knowledge without action is nothing. Okay, amen. There are a lot of fat Christians sitting around. Amen. Saying they're all stuck with the word, but they ain't going to do nothing with it. Thank you for that big amen right there. <laughs> Which he wrought, he did in the anointed one, Jesus, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. He raised Jesus from the dead against every demon and saved himself. They could do nothing about it. Raised him far above. Not above. Far above. All RK. A amen principalities, chief spirits, far above all powers and might. That's, a, that's above kings and rulers and governments, dominions, all that. Every authority that's mentioned, not only in this world, but also in the coming world. Don't miss that in the coming world. In the coming world. You mean to tell me that there is a world after this one? Yep. You mean to tell me that there's going to be positions in the world after this one? Yep. You mean to tell me that how I walk in the inheritance I have now will determine what my position will be in the world to come? Yes. And there's going to be a lot of surprise Christians because well, I've been going to Word of Faith for the last 40 years. Bless God, I know I'm getting a lot of reward in heaven. Not necessarily. It just means you might have just been sitting there for the last 40 years. And you got saved. And maybe you prayed for your family. They got saved. That was it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just stack up a lot of Bible, Bible knowledges and got, got degrees on your wall and you can tell everybody Greek and Hebrew, but you ain't done nothing with it. Amen. Because love is first, not even about you and yours. One of the days, I'm 
gonna assassinate that clock. <laughs> and come and have I at least finish for chapter one. And have put all under his feet, gave him to be the head, Jesus, over all. See, and the things is italicized. I mean the one in the text. He ain't just talking about all things. He's talking about all. He's talking about everything. This world, that which to come. Read the book of Revelations. Glory to God. And you will find out a little bit about what we're going to be over. In this world, during the millennial reign and in the New Jerusalem. Whew, that's a good study. Glory to God. Head over all things to the church. The church is his body. Now the Paul compares the church, and I close with this because I'm out of time. Paul says the church is three things. The one people are most familiar with is the word body. But the scripture also says the church is a building. It's a temple inhabited by the Holy Ghost. The third thing he calls the church, he calls the church a vineyard. Amen. And the job of an apostle of prophets and baptists and teachers is to do what? Is to put nourishment into the vineyard. So my job is to put word nourishment into the vineyard. You, the church, hallelujah, amen. amen. If you don't get nourishment into the vineyard, if you get the vineyard cut off from the nourishment, what happens to the vineyard? Anybody know? I know y'all city people, but anybody know? Amen. You cut that nourishment off from, from that vineyard, it shrivels and it dies. So he calls the church the vineyard. He called it the temple or the house building. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Of God, Jesus had the spirit without measure, meaning there was no limitations on the flow of the Holy Ghost in Jesus. You and I don't have the Spirit of God without measure, not as an individual. But the church collectively has the Spirit without measure. Okay, amen? Which means, this is why he said, the eye can't say to the nose, I don't need you. The mouth can't say to the arm, I don't need you. The arm can't say to the foot, I don't need you. Because all of us bring our share of the Spirit, Paul says later in Philippians. You bring a part, you bring a part, you bring a part, I bring a part. We all have a part of the spirit that we bring and collectively we are, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. Amen. So when we are cut off from each other, for whatever reason we are cut off from each other, we are doing a disservice to God's intention. And I just have to close here, but I'm just starting the book of Colossians. So I'm going to teach the entire book and walk all the way through it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Stand with me, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands and give God praise for the word tonight. Father, we thank you for the word. We're so grateful for the word. Hallelujah. We're just opening up the word on these things, and we're grateful for it. We give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We don't take the word for granted. We're grateful for it. And we thank you for it. Jesus' mighty name. Come on on the light board to pay attention over there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, even what you heard tonight, praise God. You've heard tonight enough to make a couple adjustments. Amen. So before I start praying for my own ministry, I got to pray for somebody else's. Glory to God. Have to walk in love even though an individual, remember Peter gave to Jesus, how awful. Should I forgive my brother? Seven times. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, I don't know how to operate.
operate the light board back there? Okay, I'll come back. I need those people to see me online. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. How often shall I forgive my brother? In a single day. One time? Yeah, I forgive him. Yeah, forgive him. Yeah, all right. Same day, twice. Now they got it. <laughs> Come on up here, Richard. <laughs> Amen. I think. I'm walking in love right now. <laughs> you know, I'll be having a little discussion with somebody, right? There. Three times in a single day. Now, you know, most of us have a three strikes rule. Come on, tell me the truth now. In the same day, somebody did something to you the third time. And Peter thought, yeah, I'm being spiritual seven times. Yeah, I know I'm talking seven times. Jesus said, nah, nah, 490 times. In a day? In other words, Jesus was saying, it's unlimited. Why? Now, the disciples said, which makes me think they understood something about it in, in Luke's account of that, Luke 17, that the disciples said, when he said that, they said, Lord, increase our faith. Thank you, Richard. Increase our faith. We need faith in order to walk in love, like you said. Exactly. That's exactly right. And Jesus said, now, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, even if you got a little bit of mustard seed side faith, you could even speak to this mountain and it'll move. In other words, he's saying, now, if you keep on feeding on the word, because Romans 10, 17, this faith comes by what? And hearing what? Hearing with your ears and hear with your heart. Faith comes by hearing and hearing about the word. If you stay in the word, you can walk in love. When you are not in the word, the flesh can easily take over. And that third time be the time you just bam! <laughs> and don't get my elbow right upside the head. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In other words, you can't do, you can't do without the word, and you can't do without the spirit, and you can't do without the love of God. And you gotta have it consistently day in and day out. One more time is give him praise and glory for the word. Lord, we do thank you then for it. We give you praise and glory for it. And we are everything you said that we are. And we have everything you said that we have. And we can do everything you said we can do. <laughs> and we thank you for it. Somebody say Philippians 4.13 with me. I'm kind of being led for a moment. Philippians 4.13 says, I can. Say that with me. I can do all things which I've seen translations translate that who. He didn't say nothing about no who. He said which. That word Christ, uh, Christos, the anointing. I can do all things dear. It's the word through in the Greek. The door. I can do all things through the anointing. The anointing empowers me. So take I can't out your vocabulary. And maybe you've never seen it done that way before. God's got so many ways to do things you have never even imagined. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You better stop trying. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody right now. You better stop trying to figure it out. Instead of figuring it out, you need to lift your hands and thank him that it's done. Come on, thank him that it's Lift your hands and thank him that it's done. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Because the sea meets every need. Glory to God. Glory to God. Couple sea with the wisdom of God. That's a whole nother. Oh, I don't open a can of blessings. If you, cover, if you couple the sea with the wisdom of God, that's how you get the harvest because 
All harvests in the word require an action of some type. I'm just giving you a little tidbit right here. All harvests, harvest, you want to harvest. But there's always a command to do something. Remember Peter said, he said, now we have left all and follow you. Amen. And Jesus said, no man have left house of mother or father, mother. But then he also said, they need to pay their taxes. He said, now you got to go down or two to the bank, toss your pole in the water. He's a fisherman. There's going to be a fish there going to get on your hook. Inside of the fish, it's going to be a coin that's worth so much money to pay your taxes and mine. Peter, I guarantee he had never seen that one before. And he's a fisherman. He went and did it, though. That's the action part of faith. Hearing, receiving, believing, speaking. But that number five, that's the one. Act. Amen. Every head bow, please. Every eye closed in prayer. I'll get started on another subject here. Every head bowed, every eyes closed in prayer. No one's moving, walking, talking, except those people sign you online, too. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, there is so much available to you. But first, you've got to ask him into your life, and you could do it very easily. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and 13, if you will acknowledge with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the highest authority there is, and you will believe in your heart that, yes, he's risen from the dead, the Bible said you would be saved. For with your heart, you believe to righteousness with God. And on your, with your mouth, you acknowledge Jesus as Lord and you get your own deliverance. Romans 10, 13 says, whoever, that would include you, called upon the authority of the Lord shall be saved, healed, delivered, set free, made whole, made sound. So I'm going to ask everyone to pray this along with me. Glory to God. Lift one hand towards heaven. That's where help comes from. And those of you online, if you're not born again, you're watching me in India somewhere, watching me in Bangladesh, I don't care where you're at. If you will lift your hand too and pray this with me right now, Jesus Christ of Nazareth will change your life. Pray this with me now. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for me on the cross where he carried my sins for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, you were put in the grave. But I believe you are risen. You are alive now. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Savior and as the master of my life. Lord, I repent of sin. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm returning back to you right now. Thank you for receiving my prayer and receiving me to you. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you and give you praise and glory for those who prayed that prayer with me. Thank you there are no creations in Christ Jesus. The old things are passed away and yes, the fresh and the new has come. Yes, we pray. The eyes of their understanding may be greater in light now. Lead and guide them where they can get more nourishment and learn about the things of God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. That was such a powerful service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I know that everyone out there was blessed by the ministry of that word. Now, I want to say congratulations to everyone that made a decision about Jesus Christ. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's some important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety, and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks, everybody, for joining, and we'll see you at the next service.